Hello everybody and welcome once again to All The Fabric 3. Today well, I've got a few little upgrades to do. I'd like to upgrade the Dank to Dank 7. I'd like to upgrade the Jetpack to Netherite Jetpack which is the top level. I'd also like to build Quantum Armor and we'll have a look at the Fusion Reactor. So let's get started. Right, here we have the Dank 6. It says Dank 4 still. No, we'll ignore that for the time being. Uh, you can see how many items it's got in it. I'm not sure if it actually tells me the... Let's have a look at this. Let's put it in here with a, a set of nether stars. If I press shift... Oh yes, there you go. Stack limit is 26... 262,000, okay. Uh, and it's a user moment is in back mode. If I put it into here now... So now we've got... <laughs> I'm not quite sure how many more that is. But it's a very large number of, uh, of items in the stack here. And then we can have a look at this. And then we've got another double, another chest's worth of space in here. So that's fantastic. I love that. Actually, I love the dang. Really handy tool. And the next thing I'm going to make here is a wormhole. A pocket wormhole. It's just one nether star and four uh, ender pearls. Not too difficult once you've got the uh, nether stars. <laughs> Although oh, that's pretty difficult. We can right click this. And then we can go to anywhere we want to. So for example, if you want to go to the end, we just click that. And then we're by the waystone. Any of the waystones we've got, we can go straight to. So I can write that click again and go back home. And we come out here, just behind. Unfortunately, I should move this wait. I will move that waystone. Hello, cat. And put it somewhere else. So that's very handy, as you can see. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is actually I'd like to upgrade the jetpack. So let's do that first. So what we need, first of all, are some um, coils. Right. I think I need 11 coils. And that make, you make those with a, a cross of redstone around like this. And we get these expert coils. I'll make 11 of those. So we need 11. And then we can make some batteries. Uh, the batteries are basically one coil. We need five batteries like this. I would... We could do something to do like this. We'll give five straight. To, oh, I've got the wrong recipe wrong. Have I? It must be it's this. Maybe it's this way around. Yes. So we need five netherite energy cells, and that leaves us with this. And this is what we can make the next bit. Of. Let's just get the jetpack out of the, off my short, off my back, so to speak, and let's have a look at the uses of this. And then we can craft up these bits. So the netherite um, thrusters are basically one furnace and. Uh, four netherite ingots, three of these expert coils and one of these energy um, cells, or netherite energy cells. We want two of those thrusters, so we'll do that. Then the next one of these is actually very straightforward. I can remember the recipe of this. You just go around here like this and you've got a sort of a, then you get your netherite capacitor. So then we can actually make this up. So we can actually, it won't put it in, so it's actually quite handy, we'll see. If for some reason it doesn't put this in, so then we press shift on here, you can see the difference. So for example, fuel usage goes up to 808, from 880 to uh, 1000 E per tick. The vertical speed also increases, as you can see. Uh, what's also important is the armor. So at the moment, the armor is plus four. I don't need to go through all the statistics. And here we have a, a plus five armor level. Of course, it also uses more, it uses more fuel, so it stores more fuel. So that's quite handy. So let's put that back on my back. And we're actually going to make, straight away, we're going to make another one. Because here is the, the recipes for the quantum armor. So let's have a look at the quantum armor here. So the one that's special is the chest plate. The tungsten steel plates, nah, we can do those. Superconductor cables, are all of these are techno born except for this uh, angel ring. And the recipe for that is two feather folding modules. Uh, how we get those in a second, I'll look at those. Two nether netherite elytras, one diamond ring, and then we've got one dragon's breath, one nether star, and one end crystal. Those are fairly straightforward. These are also fairly straightforward, just elytra with a, an ingot in the smithing table. And the feather falling modules, they're the, probably the most interesting of these. We have to use modular crafting from Industrial Revolution, so we're actually seeing, we've got at least four mods involved in this one, excluding Minecraft. So what we do to do that, this is the recipe for the modular workbench. So we've got to make one of those. So let's make one of those. And then we'll put this down somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, like that. And then we need the ingredients. 
So if you looked carefully, we needed two steel plates, one enriched nickelite ingot, one slime ball, and one Mark IV circuit per item. So well, now we go along here and we have a look at the interface. It obviously takes power, but in our case it doesn't. So we need a feather falling module like this. So we can simply shift click that into that, like that. And that should give us an, a, a feather falling module here, which we can then take out. It takes a few seconds. So I shall be back in a few seconds when we've got these two modules. So here's the, here's the second one we've got those two. So now let's have a look at the recipe for the angel ring. We can craft that in. Uh, we've seen that already. Let's just actually I've got it right pre-built here, but not quite completely correct. We just got the items in there. In fact, this is an upside down recipe. I don't think it'll work upside down. No, it doesn't. <laughs> for some reason, it's upside down. I don't ask me how that happened. Um, let's put the recipe for this and then just shift click it in, and that should simply short, swap the bits over, and then we get our angel ring. Now the angel ring in its own right is very handy. Just shift right click it, two spaces and you give up. You don't use any fuel, you can just hover around to like this. It's like creative flight basically. So I like this one. In fact I'm probably gonna <laughs> I'm probably going to use this one instead of doing all the stuff I'm doing now. But I'm, for completeness I'm going to do it. So here's the um the chest plate like this. Very powerful. It's uh, it's got doesn't tell you much about it in there when I'm shift clicking it just how much it's charged so it, it, the ingredients in these are all as I said before were all mine uh, all Tecra born stuff except for that uh, angel ring but the iridium neutron reflector is actually quite an interesting one the recipe for that is one netherite we need eight of these thick neutron reflectors plus an iridium ingot thick neutron reflectors means we need 32 neutron reflectors plus 8 beryllium. Now beryllium is the one that's fairly hard. We can make that from UU matter, 10 of them. I actually haven't made the fluid replicator yet. And in the industrial um, electrolyzer, we can use ender pearls. Uh, since we've been to the nether and it's so easy to get ender pearls, I'm going to use this recipe. And it also doesn't give me any <laughs> aluminium, which is great. <laughs> I hate aluminium. It's not, I don't, can't find any use, much use for it. And then we've got potassium cells as a byproduct, chloride cells, and uh, nitrogen cells, which is quite handy. You could, of course, use emerald dust, and then you get the those. You actually get three beryllium, so it might be might be better. But then you've got to get emerald ore for some from somewhere or other. And compressed cells, which are actually not very useful, and silicon cells, which actually are very handy. So let's craft that one up. Let's craft up the leggings, very similar stuff. Actually, they're all very similar if you look at these recipes. Boots and the helmet is over here. And then we can put those on. For, so we can take all of this off, we've got to the moment. And then we can put these on. Like that. Nothing happens, because they're not charged up. But we do... I've got my, I've got my slippers on, haven't I guess? But we do go, uh, yes, nothing really happens. We have to charge these up. So I'm going to charge these up. In fact, it takes a very long time to charge these up because at 40 million, it's going to take a considerable amount of time. So we can start shift putting one of these in here like that. And then we can wait for quite a long time until this gets some power. So I'll be back in a few seconds with, with my armor already charged up. Ah, I've forgotten something. I need to do something else. I would like to do something else. I've got a bottle from the, um, the Dragon's Breath, by the way. What I'd like to do is that I... Th that's some stuff that I've got prepared, but not, not for today. I've got in here... Uh, I know what I've got, to, I've got in here. I have been making some coils, fusion coils, because I would like to make the fusion reactor, the fusion co control computer. And we've got a plasma generator here. So what we need for the plasma generator is helium plasma. If you look at the, rest, the uses of this one here, like that is we put helium plasma in here and we get power in fact we get 8 million power for one bucket of helium plasma and if you look at the recipe for helium plasma uh, I don't see it in here let's move out to it, just type it in so here we have our helium plasma this one here like this the recipe for that is we have to make it in the fusion reactor now the fusion reactor is actually called the fusion control computer but it, it becomes a multi-block and then it becomes the fusion reactor now i found this particularly confusing this particular one because you've got 
deuterium cells, uh, deuterium plus helium three cells. We'll give these helium plasma cells. Um, the deuterium cells are actually not too difficult as it happens. The recipe for those is four hydrogen. We'll give one uh, one deuterium and that hydrogen. There's several recipes for. My favourite one is this one using electrolyzed water. So five electrolyzed water will produce one four hydrogen, which will produce one deuterium cell. The recipe for this is just water in the industrial electrolyzer. So very straightforward. So five water will make one deuterium cell. Um, now the other one that's actually the next recipe on that. Go back a bit. I need to go back further down time. In the industrial, yeah, that's right. Now we need to still go back because we need the helium three cell. The recipe for this, obviously, you can make this in an industrial centrifuge with sixteen helium cells. We'll make one helium three and it gives you some empty ones. But endstone dust plus two empty cells will give you both helium three and helium. It'll also give you twelve sand and one small pile of tungsten dust, which is actually quite a handy recipe. And then you could also make this in, in the fusion reactor with one deuterium cell and then one tritium cell. Now the tritium cell <laughs> recipe for this is actually very straightforward. It's just four deuterium cells in the industrial centrifuge will produce one of those. <laughs> so just water will produce the helium-3 stuff as we need. Anyway, that aside, I need to build this, put this the computer down. So let's go and look at it. I want to put it down over here. Somewhere in the middle, like this doesn't matter very much. And then you click it. It's a it's a multi-block structure, so you can click it like this, and then it says it requires sixteen coils. Okay, that seems like fair enough. You can click it up again, and you can get to an, the next size, which is seventeen, and seventeen still requires sixteen coils. So you can have a look at this one. The coils are just a little bit more spread out. It goes twice as fast. But there must be a drawback because I'm not quite sure what the next one is. And then the, the next one up here is eight, and this one requires 24 cells. But the speed has increased significantly. And actually, the, what's confusing about this fusion reactor is it actually produces power. So let's have a look. When I've got, I've actually got the cells or some of the cells. So we'll go back to the size, uh, the lowest size. This one's slightly buggy as well. If you click this one here, it goes down five at a time. Click this one, it goes up five at a time. But this one here should be the one that you go down. This one's taking you down one at a time. They just missed up the, the buttons a bit. So like this. Now, good to make this. I have unfortunately not made enough fusion coils. I was hoping to do that. Okay. Oh, no, I've not made enough. I need a 16, and I've only made eight. And as you can see... We'll have a quick look at those because they are very expensive in terms of resources. Let's have a look at the coil. I've actually got recipes prepared for this stuff. We want to craft 16 of these is what we'd actually need to start with. So we would need around about, you can see how much coal we've got here, 2,520 coal. Probably a similar amount of redstone. This will be for sand, which will basically be for glass. So we need just over well about 1100 or 1200 of this the same 1500 sand so is a lot of resources they're not too bad 60 ingots. that's not a big deal nickel ingots, iridium ingots 104 iridium ingots that's a lot of iridium and you know how difficult it is to find that but you can use the, uh, the miner and that will help a lot ok it's night time I shall come back when the coils are made and my arm is charged up see you in a few seconds back again a few seconds actually was in your time for me it was about a week <laughs> i've been charging this up here and i've been charging it up with a, a very very slow generator i've been using the diesel generator and in here i've got some nitro diesel nitro diesel the uses of this one are actually let's have a look can i do the uses no i can't let's have a look can I do the use of the cell yes i can so here is the diesel generator so if i left click the diesel, no right click the diesel generator and you've got these recipes. So these are the different fuels you can use in the diesel generator. I find this a bit weird, I have to be honest with you. All of these recipes here require diesel. 
I think they do anyway. I'm not sure about nitro fuel. Diesel you have to make in the distiller, which is over here, this end block here. And the end block requires industrial machine frames. So industrial machine frames are of a high tier. And certainly end more of end game rather than beginning game. But the diesel uh, generator is actually low tier. So it's an early game one. So that, I find it a bit weird. It also produces very little output. So look. It doesn't tell you. It's actually producing... Ah, here we go. So the output is 32E per tick. So as you can see... There, yeah, there it says tier low on this one here. So so it's very strange that this is uh, produces so much power so little power or so a lot of power but over a long period of time to fill this thing up now this thing here is the fusion control computer and i built the six by the six block one so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to charge this up a little bit faster i should have in some one of my chests here some generators here i've got some generators i've actually got a demise generator and i've got a withered generator the demise generator I'll actually have a look at these I think I saw another one somewhere about as well maybe not so that's some of the uses of this one here you can make a you can make this infernal generator and then to do that what you have to do to use this is you have to basically get all of these other generators running at the same time don't want to do that otherwise you can put in different things and get different amounts of energy out. So if we put another star in here, we'll get 12 million uh, energy. If we put a wither skeleton skull, we'll get 912 121,000. And here we get 40,000 for the for a wither rose. Okay. So we got lots of farms, no big deal. In fact, I have a reasonable amount of farms. So let's put this down here. Like, oops, wrong one. Try it again. <laughs> Put it have, have it in my hand first of all. I needed some other stuff. I haven't, I haven't got one with me. Let's just go and pick up a couple. And I think I need around about four. I'll take three. Because while I'm doing that, I'm also going to use the plasma generator. Now, the plasma generator isn't actually that expensive. So let's. I say that expensive for a tech reborn machine it's not too bad and here I've got the plasma generator and here I've got some oh I did get some wither skeleton skulls as well uh, I should show you the recipe for those because I mean not the recipe we've got lots of wither skeleton skulls now this thing's nasty I'm going to say it's very nasty <laughs> the wither generator will generate a reasonable amount of power and so does the demise generator. If we look at the uses of the demise generator, it's for basically mob drops. Oops, pressed, so I must have pressed the wrong button. So look, use of this one. So it's it's required to make the wither generator. So that's part of this. And here we've got different fuels. And the best one of these, oddly enough, is a wither skeleton skull, and that produces this million. The output from it, it should tell me here, is 512, and the wither generator is 2000. So let's put this down here like this. This is also nasty. Let's put in some skulls into here. Like that. And you'll see you're getting this effect. And this effect, if I'm not mistaken, yes, if I get into this area, we should get slowness. Yes, I can see it coming up now. We get a weakness. We're getting weakness here for nine seconds. That's that's not too bad. It's, it doesn't really affect me that much. But this one, the wither star generator, is very nasty indeed. This one produces generates a withering effect. So if we get this one, we'll start to take damage, as you can see. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> Don't need to die from a generator. So these are going to charge this up fairly quickly. So let's come away from that. So if I can get near it to actually touch have a look at this yes we can so this fusion control computer is charged up to eight eight million but we need some stuff to put into this so there is another thing i could do is i actually could put the plasma generator down here as well actually let's do that because it'll make things really whiz along this the output rate for this one is 2000 
and then we can put in a bucket of helium plasma and halides and that's going to produce 8 million so we've got to 20 million for that uh, so we should have plenty of power going into this at a reasonable rate as you can see the actual rain energy charger is 2.7 thousand 27 uh, no, 2.7 thousand 2700 e per tick okay so now what we want to do with this is we need to make some uh, helium uh, so i've got deuterium here and i've got some helium 3 this is just straightforward helium which is used in the cells We've been through the recipe of those, so I don't need to do that again. So let's go and put these into here like this. In fact, I might as well wait till I get 40 million. Because when I've got 40 million, things start to happen. Uh, but you have to have a recipe in this. So we could actually, I've got four extra helium. So let's just put these two into that like that. And you see here it says charge 30%. So when this gets to 100%, and it won't be too long, um, because it's going up reasonably fast it should start to process this recipe but not only does it process this recipe it also generates a lot of power so in fact at the moment we've got 13 million out of 100 million that we can have in here in fact it's not true in fact it goes up to two gigabytes i think of um or is it two thousand gigabytes there's a huge amount of power will come into this so i shall see in a few seconds no we'll, while I'm doing that, let's go and have a look at this. I'm charging up these quantum boots there. Oh, yes, I did shift click them out. Like that. Oh dear! <laughs> Never mind. We'll have a dead eye in Gollum in a second. If he doesn't get out of there. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen him do that. I haven't seen them do that before. Never mind. Right. What was I doing? I got distracted. Oh, yes, I know. I built a charger mat. That's this thing. I'm putting into that the armor that we've... This armor. You can see shift-clicking that doesn't always sync properly. And we're getting the items in here, but they actually have gone out of here. The charger mat quite ex is quite expensive. Let's have a look. This one. Just no big deal. It comes that doesn't come into question really. Uh, an advanced machine frames no big deal. Um, energy flow chips. Let's have a look at the recipe for those. Fairly expensive. They need these two lapotronic crystals to, to make one of those. Plus tungsten and iridium alloy plates. Um, unfortunately, the worst one is this. Is these are lapotronic energy orb. <laughs> this needs eight around iridium alloy ingot. Fairly expensive. It takes time, but you do get there eventually. You can actually make it. So we can put this. Up. Let's take off our existing armor. Shift click it off. It's not always shift clicking, and then put this on. And you can see immediately something happens. In fact, what we've got is just walking speed. Is this? Let me just make sure I've got my boots out of there. My running boots, because they're going to make it run. Run. Now you see we are going extremely fast. We can also fly. We get the creative flight. This just does use power up. In fact, I don't know, have I got a? Did he? Did, oh no, he's still there. What happened there? What did I just get? Oh, some string. That's weird. Not sure how we got some string. Anyway, it's more so possible that we get a little bit of extra reach as well. So normally you can reach what. So I'm not 100% sure about this. We do get water breathing because of the perspective. So we should be able to reach this. So that's... If I'm in this block here, unfortunately the, the feet are too fast. I, I can't quite reach that. No, no, I don't get the reach. But we do get water, um, air breathing. So let's just... What's happened here? Oh, I've taken it off. Oh, yes, that's what <laughs> I was going to test that, wasn't I? So that's, I can reach that. Let's go back one block. Oh, actually, I can still reach that, can't I? So maybe if I put this on now, I can I'll get the extra one. I'm not 100% sure. No, we don't. 
It's actually night time, but it doesn't really matter much. I'll just have a quick demonstration of this. We just need to find some water that's deep enough. Here we go. We should also get... I'm not sure we get for the hole, to be honest with you. I thought we did. But as you can see, in water, no big deal. We've got uh, air bubbles coming out of the uh, out of the th out of the costume. So let's, let's press F5. Can we actually see ourselves breathing? <laughs> well, that's a bit difficult. I'm not sure which in front and back was. Never mind. So out we fly this one. I do think we actually do have full protection, but I'm not 100%. Sure. Yes, that's right. Last time I demonstrated this, I didn't get full protection. In fact, it's my fourth time making this video. <laughs> So anyway, sorry, a slight aside. So let's have a look, how are we doing here? So this, as you can see, this armor is very, very fast. In fact, I actually find the walking speed too fast. So we're up to 70% now. And I shall be back in a few seconds when we get up to around about 100%. In fact, let's have a look. So that's finished, got no more power in that one. This one's still working and I'm and then the, therefore the which one's actually also not the withering generator must be working still yes it is I can see it rotating yeah I'll be back in a second when it's daytime so while that's still cooking I want to show you one more thing here I have a entangled chest the other side of the, the entangled chest is connected to a mine um, or a miner so it's actually in Fortress 2 you know, like that and if I come along here, we can, this is where it's running. So we should be seeing stuff coming in here because I've got a chunk loader. And as you can see, this is now full. Well, let's go back home quickly. We'll just do this twice. And we'll have a look at this. I moved, as you can see, I moved that. So in here, we see the items coming in, but they've stopped coming in. So that means as soon as they've left the nether, that industrial trunk loader doesn't seem to be working. So, as a way around that, let's right click this and go back to Fortress 2. Like this. And you'll see it, it, it's still working away and it's still putting stuff in here. What you can do if you have cheats enabled, you can do a force load command. So, you can do force load and then you can query and we'll see what you've got. Because we're going to add one. And the one we're going to add is the current position, like that. So we're just going to add this particular chunk. So if you do slash force load, and you can type query, and it'll tell you which one it is. So we've actually loaded this chunk. So now let's go home. Have a look at that again. And you'll see this time it's still carrying on. So the chunk industrial chunk loader from... But actually I actually don't think either of the chunk loaders are working. The Kibi one also, I did remember testing it. But I won't guarantee it's not working. So let's have a look over here. So we've got thirty-eight million point, yeah, thirty-eight point three million coming in here. So that's pretty decent. So let's have a look how much power we've got in this. This is run out of power. And now. Oh, that's the demise generator. It's still working, obviously, because I can see the bubble, the effect. So when this gets up to 40 million, let's put this in, these two in. I took them out just in case it, it didn't work. So it's 98% charged. Watch what happens as soon as it gets up to the 40 million, 99% charged. Let's have a look over here. So we've got a few more seconds. 9, 9, 40 million. Now it kicks in. You can see that the power is now going up considerably. It should be starting to make these... these um, these cells now so we're making this cell it's got no power in here but it's once it started this process it will carry on and it will make more and more power as you can see we've got 6.5 and it's starting to make the first um, cell so we're getting this helium plasma cell coming out of here like this it's also of course being charged up because of the, the generators let's just see if I can remove the weather. and maybe there's a weather star in here no it's all gone now if you break the generators, by the way, they lose their power. So, and this one here is just about full. We can actually break this one. That's no big deal because the helium plasma ones we can break because that's the tech, tech reborn one and they don't drop the power. You see, this will still be charged up here. 
Oh, so now it's finished, thankfully. So we can actually remove these two generators. We don't need them anymore. And have a look in here. And you'll see this has now got 23 million already. And it'll carry on going up and up and up. And it'll go well over the 100 million, as it says here. Uh, and still produce lots and lots of power. In fact, I'll be back in a few seconds when that's actually produced a lot of power. So actually, Genera is crafting... So 16.3 E per tick is how much it's using, but it's also increasing this at the same time. And we're back in a second anyway. This is when this is, these when we've got more than one of these cells done. Right back, it's still it's still crafting these up, and you see it's already gone over the actual size, 102 percent charge. We've got three of these helium plasma cells, which is great. I will carry on making those as time goes on, but we can now use the power from this machine to actually power our other machines. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to change this. I'll put it underground, but for the time being, let's just put it. To, let's just put it across down here like this. Send it around here. I'm in the way, of course, as usual. Go up over the cells here, and then we should be able to come into this. It'll probably be around about here, I think. I know. So this is now going to have power in here like this, as you can see. Power in these cables are going up. I probably should remove one of these two. Don't need to quite so many, so we get rid of this one. Like that. And so all of these machines are now going to be powered from the fusion reactor. So we can power the blast furnace, and the blast furnace should now be powered at full speed. It's here. I'm having difficulty with it. I'm going, oops, I just right click that before. So this will now get plenty of power, so we should be able to run that at full speed all the time. So long, as long as it's crafting something in here, we should be okay. As you can see, the fuel is still going up. So there we are. Well, that's it for this episode. Next time, I'm going to have a look at factories from uh, Industrial Revolution. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.